Hey YouTube, it's me, Numistaka, and I have some news for you, hot off the press. You can now find me on Instagram, and I know a lot of you guys in the stacking and collecting community do use Instagram, so from now on I will be posting stuff, uh, stills, movies, and uh, information on Instagram as well as YouTube. And uh, so please do come and follow me there. I only started it off this morning. You can see I've only got six followers at the moment. So come over to Instagram, find Numistaka, and please follow me. Right, now we've got that one out of the way. Let's get on to the business at hand. This is the last of the uh, mega grading unboxing videos for a few days until the next um, delivery arrives from NGC. This one is pretty special, so uh, do the usual, go and make a cup of tea, hang around and watch it all the way through. You can see there's quite a few coins here in the box and uh, even though this little box is not full up with coins, it certainly makes up in quality for anything that it does not have in quantity. So let's get on with it. Just look at this one for starters, 1937, two sovereign, double sovereign piece, PC63. This one has been given a cameo designation. Um, it's got a bit of fluff on it, but apart from that, very, very beautiful cameo coin. Um, probably maybe 25% of them are cameo. 75% of the ones that are graded uh, are not given a cameo designation. So it's, to get a cameo is pretty cool. Here's another one, this is the One Sovereign, and this one is a PF63, also with a Cameo designation. Um, really nice. The Cameo reflects the, uh, the level of frosting, and I think uh, whenever they started with a new polished die and uh, doing the minting, the first ones uh, get the Cameo effectively, and then the ones, as they continue using the die, it loses the Cameo until a point where they can't designate it with a Cameo designation anymore. Some of them are also designated Ultra Cameo if it's a very strong effect, and, uh, and that's great, and, but they're literally maybe a tenth of the uh, ones that have been graded are designated Ultra Cameo. So, this one is, uh, is my coin, which is always nice to see one of mine, and uh, I've had two of these double sovereigns graded. The first one I had graded and conserved got a 65 star, and then this one has a 65, a 64 star. So you can see here two double sovereigns, 63 cameo, and you can see the one, uh, my one doesn't have the cameo quite to the same effect. Didn't get a cameo rating, but it did get a star rating. And so far I think only one or two graded coins have been given a star so, and I have two of them, so that's pretty cool. I had a 65 star before, and now I've got a 64 star. So very pleased with these results, and uh, it's lovely when these coins grade well, because they are such beautiful, special specimen coins, uh, historical coins. There were about 5,000 of these minted, 5,000 sets. Um, you see them from time to time. They're not entirely rare, but they certainly are desirable and valuable. Uh, if you buy the sets of these coins, they go at auction from about 9,000 plus buyer's premium, uh, so about 11,000 or so up to about 18 to 24,000 for the very, very best of the best in 66 Ultra Cameo kind of grade. Then we've got some um, American coins for a change. So uh, these are $5 gold piece, 1915 Eagle. Uh, half eagle, and this is the Indian head version. Always a lovely coin to see. I've got a couple of these in my collection, and this one uh, it was sent in by one of the Silver Forum members. Um, difficult coins to grade. Very difficult to know between and an, between a 58 and a, a mint state one. It all seems to go on the level of detail in the feathers and uh, the, the fields, because obviously the fields wear because they're exposed and the design stays relatively unworn unless it's very, very worn as a coin. So this particular member, 1912, 1915, um, one got a 58, one got a 55, 
both lovely coins. And then, unfortunately, there was a third, and I'll show you the story of the third in a second. In the meantime, cast your eyes over this very, very beautiful uh, mint state shield back sovereign from 1871. Uh, Silver Forum members been waiting for this one for a while, and I'm sure we'll be glad to see this back and in their collection. A lot of these shield backs, they wear much more on the queen side than they wear on the return, so you'll often see the shield very nice and relatively unworn. There are some high points, I think, on the um, bottom left-hand side of the shield and also the braiding on the queen's head, so always watch those points before anything else. This one is a bit unfortunate, um, another Silver Forum member. Uh, this one got the dreaded, dreaded surface hairlines designation and uh, I'm going to go in here a little bit close so you can actually see what those surface hairlines look like because before you're grading anything, before you're sending anything for grading, check to see if these markings are on the coin. If you're buying a coin raw, check under a jeweler's loop to see whether you're seeing these like striations and you can see on the right hand side of the field there's little parallel striations I probably should have taken a look at it myself before it went in for grading, but unfortunately that one does have surface hairlines and that makes it ungradable with a numeric grade. So this is the third of the Half Eagles, and this one was a 1916S ostensibly, and it wasn't put into a capsule at all because it is a fake. And it is very easy. Honestly, it really is very easy to be taken in by these things. You often see that they look like fakes in the light of day. When someone tells you they're a fake, it's very easy to see why they tell you they're a fake and that they, um, you know, the obvious telltale signs are there when you handle it. But when you have two or three in front of you, you know, it's not that easy to know. These, It really is not easy to know that this was a fake. And you look at it now... And you, you know exactly why this coin was picked up as a fake, and uh, and it probably is. You can see here on the reverse the uh, the kind of strange um, shading. It almost looks like a top layer's kind of been rubbed off or something like that. You know, I don't know whether that's a telltale sign, but it does look very suspicious and very odd to me. Looking at that. Um, not, I don't really, I didn't notice it when it went in for grading and, um, you know, I need to learn what to look for. But now you look at it, you can see it does look very uh, different to the other two and probably NGC have got this one spot on that it is unfortunately a fake coin. Hopefully this member will be able to get his money back and go back to where he bought it and, uh, and then ha have a little moan there. Okay, so let's go on to 1977, the year of Her Majesty's Silver Jubilee. Um, that was the year that uh, that I saw the Queen pass, pass, pass in her... I don't think it was the stake. It was the... Uh, I think she had a Bentley or something with a landolette kind of top, so you could actually see and wave through it, through it. Through it. The, uh, the, the Silver Jubilee, 1977. And there are some very interesting... Coins, medals, and stamp, stamp, stamp were around at the time of the Jubilee. This one is a another medal. Um, this one is uh, celebrating Prince Charles and uh, Lady Diana Spencer in 1981 for their marriage. And this is this one was given to all the people who attended the ceremony at St Paul's Cathedral. Um, I think there were a few thousand of these. A lot of people attended the wedding, and each one has a number. And NGC have graded this and then put the number on the holder. So uh, the next uh, few coins were sent in by one of the Silver Forum members who uh, lives in Luxembourg. And uh, he's been picking up some interesting coins, Luxembourg coins. Not a lot of Luxembourg coins have been graded by NGC, but uh, I think uh, he's, he's continually on the lookout for interesting coins from uh, from Luxembourg. A lot of these coins are very low mintage. There aren't that, that many of them around, so they're quite interesting coins to uh, pick up and grade. Uh, in terms of quality, some of the coins have been lacking a little bit 
in quality and may have been messed around a little bit in the past. So, uh, but this one's a particularly nice one, The Death of Queen Astrid. I like this when it came in. This was sent for conservation, I think, but uh, even, even after conservation, they weren't able to bring it up very much in terms of quality. Moving on to Rwanda. So we've made, um, there's been videos on Rwanda before, uh, and this one is the, the Nautical Ounce series. And this one unfortunately missed the uh, 69 grade and got a 68. A few more coins from, uh, from my friend in Luxembourg. And uh, I think one or two of these coins represent, there was, there was Grand Duke Jean. Oh, this is one of those. Yeah, there we go. The, uh, the gold coin, the Grand Duchy anniversary coin. I quite like this coin. I like this when it came in as a raw proof coin. And I think there's only been one or two of those that have been graded. He also had uh, an old American coin, uh, a 1986 uh, Eagle, $5 coin. So uh, this was graded as well. Um, I think a lot of people grade small coins just to be able to see them better and handle them better. So whilst it might be quite expensive to grade a small gold coin, uh, and maybe the value of the coin doesn't really kind of make it justified, uh, a lot of people do like to grade them just through the sheer ease of... Uh, of handling them. That was another regal stack of coin for, I think, Waterloo. And then on to a, another PF70, Bunny Rabbit. Uh, pretty cool, pretty great. Oh, it's a 2016, 69. Oh, it's another 70. Three Bunny Rabbits. Well, um, you can probably take a look at Platinum Sky's video on the unboxing of these bunny rabbit coins. Um, there's been a lot of interest by people trying to buy these bunny rabbit coins from him. They are pretty rare coins and they are commanding a very, very good price. Moving on a little bit more to the Sapphire uh, Jubilee. This is a, a crown size coin. So it's 1.16, 1.18 ounces of gold, got a 69. And uh, that's a pretty good grade for that. Very um, rare limited edition gold coin. Um, it's not one that I've thought about buying. Uh, it's a, quite a big investment. I mean, these, these coins are a lot of gold and the premium is very high, um, but they do seem to hold their value reasonably well. I've noticed even at auctions, you know, they, they do uh, get quite a high premium over the gold price. This is another example of that larger size five sovereign um, gold piece. Um, they, and notice on this one, actually, that um, if you remember a few videos back, the NGC grading team graded them all proof, PF. This one was graded uh, MS69 DPL for deep proof light. They have finally paid attention and these BU coins that should never have been graded PF for proof uh, are finally being graded as um, the right designation, which is an MS DPL, or in fact, even better, they should be an SP. They really should be an SP coin, even not an MS coin, in my opinion. And here's uh, another, uh, another rare coin. That, that was the, uh, the Santa Maria. That's a gold one. There are only a hundred of those gold coins uh, minted. Uh, exceptionally rare, very valuable, and a very nice one to have graded. And I was able to send that one in in time to get the first releases. Here's another one of those. Uh, there's two of these. So there's another one of these um, coins. That one got a 70. 70 is extremely good for this coin. Extremely good. Uh, a lot of them are graded 69, I think. So a 70 on this five sovereign BU coin is pretty good and uh, nice that it's in the GB label as well. Um, so that was a really good one to get. Some of the next few coins belong to a friend of mine who collects pandas. Um, if you saw um, a very nice Numistaka silver five ounce um, kind of um, handmade, I don't know, weight or bar, it was something between a bar and a weight. 
Um, anyway, so he's the guy who uh, gave me that, which I'm very grateful for. And, and some of his pandas are here in this video and they just done, um, well, that one didn't do perfectly, but that's quite an old one. That was kind of expected anyway, but some of the others did really, really well. And uh, I always say pandas should either be graded and put in a capsule or in the OMP. Um, they should almost never be taken out of the OMP and put in a capsule. I think that it gets um, the best play, best way to look after them is in the original plastic or in a slab um, because they do damage easily. There's some silver pandas here, different varieties of silver pandas, large date, small date, uh, most of them fairly old and very beautiful. And uh, it's very nice to see these coming through for grading as well. And uh, I was able to do pretty well uh, via NGC for this member of the forum, which I was really happy with. So uh, if you live in the UK or you live anywhere in Europe uh, or even under certain circumstances in the States and you would like your coins featured on the Numistaka YouTube channel, then uh, do take a look at the Silver Forum. Uh, all the grading for these videos is done via the Silver Forum. So all you have to do is really register as a user of the Silver Forum and then send me a PM um, Numistaka, send me a PM in the Silver Forum and we can talk about the grading and I'll be able to then drop your line and let you know the costs and timings for getting coins graded by, uh, by NGC. Uh, I think so far about 50 or so Silver Forum members have had their coins graded uh, and uh, there hasn't been any fatalities at the moment. So uh, yeah, feel free if you want to to uh, join the Silver Forum Grading Club. I uh, hope you like that. Brings us to the end of this mega unboxing. Uh, please like, subscribe and let me have your comments. <laughs>